Hello, I am the Red Monk, and today I will teach you how to increase your charisma rating and how to be a tough individual. Now, to be a tough individual, you have to be very juxtaposed. You know what I mean? You have to be a little bitch in a manner, right? You have to be rude, right? Women only want men who are tough and rude. This is crucial. This is crucial because it is the natural order, right? As men, we are taught from the start that if you are a dickhole to someone, they want you more, right? Because you're just that freaking much. You're that much of a petty little bitch. And it is crucial. You're gay if you don't. Let's say someone, let's say someone says something to you. You just don't respond. You just go like this. Try to be all cool. Because you're that freaking tough. And you're in a war zone. Right? You're in a war zone. There's no other option. But to be the worst kind of dickhole. Because in Pennsylvania. You have to be tough or survive. It is the natural order. As a man. You need to be tough. It is the natural order. Right? You have to. You have to survive the natural order. It's survival of the fittest. It is the natural order. And you are the pinnacle of the natural order. You are juxtaposed. And the reason I wear these glasses is if I take them off, I look like I'm gay. You know, that creep comes out. That creep comes out. And I'm not ashamed. I'm not a fucking ashamed. I already talked about that shit last video. I'm not ashamed. And I know I don't pretend like I am always fighting for survival because I'm so fucking tough. But for the most part, especially in our world right now, being a dickhole, pretending like you are having to fight for your life every single day and having to kill the competition <gasps> doesn't get you as far as, you know, being nice. You know, being a little bright and happy. Right? That is, there's a lot of strength in that. Right? And pretending like you are going to have to kill people to beat out the competition is not good. And I want to talk about this in this video and about how that positive sum game and how together is a good thing. And how, you know, sometimes it takes more of, you know, being a man to, you know, to like stand up and not constantly having to be the moral, uh, fucking backbone you know that attitude right that attitude of i'm a jerk because i have to because it's a natural order and if you're a jerk people will like you more because you're that much that is very petty that is very very petty and it is really uh, it takes a lot of you know, courage to really say how you feel and being a uh, you know respectful person now i'm gonna say this you know Especially, I can think, like, back in the old days, living with shit, we lived so fucking nice, right? And we could be a lot more, you know, generous and honest and not have to worry about starving to death, right? Now, it's really important to be polite, right? Like, I am crucially polite. I'm a very nice person. Uh, I'm not nice. I used to be nice. And then I realized that nice people get screwed over, right? Because once people realize they can get shit off of you, they don't fucking stop. But if you're polite, you know, words are free, right? You don't have to constantly keep up the image of being a tough guy. If you, like, you know, are nice and polite. Oh, I think I'm saying nice. You have to be uh, polite. Nice people get screwed over. Like, when I was a kid, I used to think everyone was, you know, as good-hearted as, you know, I felt. And I would, like, lend them stuff, and they'd never give it back, and... They would be, you know, jerks and they just take, you know, if you start giving, people will just take from you. But, you know, words are free. And I think it's really, you know, important to be bright and happy. And it oftentimes is just better for you and the people around you to, you know, be bright and happy and polite than to be the tough guy, the alpha male. And there's no aspect of, yeah, maybe it's not as directly you know, helpful for you to be 
uh, you know, polite or to hold the door or whatever. Though, I wouldn't worry about, like, giving people shit because if you give people shit, they'll just start taking, right? You know, words are free. You know, be bright and happy. And if you can make other people around you better off, you will get better off in return, right? It's, uh, there's this law of the universe, you know, sort of like how high pressure air rises and lower pressure air sinks. There's this sort of a law of the universe that I like to call it a positive sum game is a good way to describe it. But like happiness is contagious, right? Like, let's say you are surrounded by people that, you know, are really happy, you'll get happy in return. And if you make other people happy, you'll get happy in return, right? We are a product of our environment, and the people around us are our environment. Like, if you're surrounded by a lot of, you know, drug users or, you know, weed smokers, you're more likely to become one, right? Because you are a product of your environment, and... The people around you are the environment. You make up the environment for other people, right? Uh, it's the positive sum game. We sort of have to, you know, come together. And being a tough guy doesn't really get you that far. You know, if you're a jerk to other people, th- your surroundings will become jerks. And you just become more of a jerk in return. And this thing of how, you know, people rise together, right? It's sort of like high pressure, right? It's just... If you're surrounded by, you know, people who are happy, you're more likely to become happy. It's a law of the universe, right? If you're surrounded by people who are more likely to go to college, you're more likely to go to college, right? You are a product of your environment, and the people around you are your environment, and you are the environment of the people around you. Now, I'm very uh, sentimental, you know? I'm very nostalgic for a lot of shit that doesn't even affect me, and it really important mindset to have is just to be really sentimental right just to be so uh nostalgic and like sort of grateful for your surroundings you know just because if you have happy notions in your head you'll be outwards you know more happy and just like looking out the window and just seeing like trees and shit and you're just like that's a nice tree i'll pull a picture right now we're just seeing like clouds and you just look at the clouds and you're like it's a nice cloud. You know what I mean? Just that mindset of being grateful and being, you know, happy about your surroundings, your environment, just makes the going a little bit easier. It's like, you know, the universe has been alive for how many billions of years and it made this little world I'm looking at right now. You know, it's just, you're so much better off than being the alpha male that has to compete. You know, I think it's really important to take advantage of that and making the other people around you. I mean, just making the world better for other people is a good enough reason to not be a dickhole, you know? But if you, like, need a paper and book reason that being nice to other people will make you selfishly better off, you know, the fact that that positive sum game, how people sort of rise together, you know, like, what is one fucking person going to do? But, you know, this, here, a good way to describe this, this is take, take a little bit of deep thinking. Now, if you live in the suburbs or in the city, right, why do they have Chinese restaurants that are open at 2 a.m. in the city, but not in the suburbs? Right, why is that? Why do we have Chinese restaurants that are open 24-7, but only in the cities? Why do we have that, but not in the suburbs? Like, I live in the suburbs. In China Buffet, it closes by 9 p.m. But in the city, they have China Buffet at 2 a.m. They can get fucking stir-fried rice any time of the day. And it's crucial to understand the fact that the more people that want something, the more that'll happen, right? Like, the people I'm going to school with, they get kind of, like, competitive. You know, they want to be the only one. But if there's more people going into that field... There's more, you know, money put in that direction. There's more reason, you know, and there's more uh, demand. And, you know, higher demand is a higher supply. Therefore, you can get Chinese restaurants open 24-7, you know. If you were the only person who went to a Chinese restaurant, there'd be no fucking Chinese restaurants. But 
since you know in cities there's so many people, they can have enough demand to open the Chinese restaurant at 2 a.m. And that is crucial, right? That is the role of the universe. And being the the only one, you know, this is a sort of thing that's like inbred into our minds, you know, growing up stabbing deer, the fact that being the the best and the only one is a good thing. But the world has changed, right? You are better off if your surroundings, you know, the other people around you are better off, right? And uh, they're better off if you're better off to them, right? It's just a positive sum game. And being the only one, being the king of the hill or whatever, is such a outdated sort of emotion. You know, if making other people around you better off is just not a good enough reason, it's not as better in your self-interest, the fact that they are better off, just that makes you better off, you know? And I think that's really, really important to understand. Being the, the alpha male, the, you're the king of the hill, being the only one, being the tough guy who has to glare at people and be, make sure other people think I have big biceps or whatever, it's not as fruitful. It's not as better off for you, right? Because your know, happiness breeds happiness, right? And having other people around you better off makes you better off. They're isn't a limited resource. It's not a certain amount of deer that, you know, if that person gets a good job, I will no longer get a good job. No. If that person, you know, the neighbor down the street has a better job, they have more, uh, they can contribute to the demand, right? They can contribute to that demand. They can have more money. And that's, this is a, a law of the universe. This positive sum game, sort of how, you know, high pressure air rises and lower pressure air falls. It is a law of the universe that having other people around you happier and better off makes you as a person happier and better off. And you know, thinking that you have to be the king of the hill, that shit is plain fucking weakness. It'll hold you back. You are better off if other people around you are better off. Shit. So, conclude. Conclude. In conclusion, you need to be nice, and no one thinks you are the tough guy, because there's 7 billion other people out there. There's no way you are the best. There's no way you can be the alpha male, because there's always a fucking bigger fish, and you're just plain better off, because, you know, success breeds success. And you are a product of your environment. And you are also part of the environment for other people. And the other people are part of your environment. So if you make your environment better, you will be better off. And those people are part of your environment. And if their environment is better off, you know, you make the decision to, you know, smile and open the door for someone and not <laughs> be competitive alpha male you will make them better off and then your environment will get better. And there you go. Later.